Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachachachorash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a part two. Um, you know, going into this video done by this brother, Fisher Turn Hunter 4. Or I don't know the brother's Hebrew name. Um, but he does good videos. And um, if you're watching, you can put your Hebrew name on to the uh, comment board. But um, I'm responding to a video that this brother did. Uh, PSA. This man is teaching false doctrine going into this brother, Yahweh Maccabees, which I believe he's in Louisiana. Um, yeah, he is. Because uh, there was issues, you know, in, in times past with the brother. But uh, apparently, you know, he got on the right track. All right. And uh, he's teaching, which is a good thing. All right. You have particular men. Um, who enter into the labors of the apostles, the bishops, the elders, and the brothers who've been laboring. And sometimes things don't work out, you know, between men. But if you can, you know, pull it together and eventually, you know, get out there and teach and, you know, start your own thing. All right. As long as you're teaching the right doctrine, there's nothing wrong with that. All right. We do these videos because we have to constantly keep the, the mental state of the sheep intact because you have a lot of brothers and sisters who will watch us okay and then they'll see you giving double honors all right and then what happens is particular men they'll get following they'll get likes they'll get ooh they'll get ahs and they'll start to feel themselves and then who they really are starts to seep out you know and you start to notice things here and there you're like well wait a minute what's up with this brother so this is why the lord has these things happen these things don't happen because we have a lust and a heart on to make somebody look bad, but we have to constantly keep, okay, the mindset of the sheep, all right, uh, that, that's of importance, as the scriptures say, be diligent to know the state of, of thy flock, the sheep, all right, and as Yahweh Shai is the good shepherd, you have particular men that have been set up as shepherds, all right, under the good shepherd to guide the flock, all right, so the doctrine is important. OK, so when we see things like this, we address it because the flock, out there, they got to know. All right. What's right and what's wrong, because sheep are beautiful animals. Right. But they're extremely stupid at times and they can get thrown off track. and <laughs> You got to go rescue the sheep. OK, and that's the the the, the uh, purpose of the shepherd, the good shepherd. OK, they put their he put his lives on the line for his sheep. All right. And that's what Yahweh Shah did for us. And we're entering into his works and, and, and ultimately built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. So this is why these videos got to be done. All right. So the brothers and sisters that are, you know, sincere can know. OK, so let's keep listening to this, because in the first uh, part, we addressed, you know, the, the, the you know, uh, the seed can produce after its kind, no matter where it's planted. All right. Starting with man, but even in the field of herbs, animals, fowls, and so forth, you know, that applies, okay? The, the seed, which is in the men, okay, the patriarchs determine, all right, the nation, point blank period, all right? So now we're going to address a new uh, something else in Genesis 3 and 15. Warn the flock, you know? And this is this what this video is to do is to warn the flock of this dude who's teaching general heresies. Now, I'm going to go into this video a little more. I'm going to let a little more of this video play because he gets deeper into this topic. You know, like the woman carries any weight as far as the seed line. She doesn't carry the seed. The man carries the seed. And see, this is where a lot of Israelite men get weak because women, they complain about this doctrine. Well, they say, well. You know, I, I'll save you. Not saying that's what he's doing. All right. But yes, the, 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 the seed of our nation relies on our fathers, the patriarchs. Point blank period. OK. <laughs> Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. All right. You have great women who were linked with great men to bring forth other great men. But the, the point blank period, the seed of our fathers is what determines our nation. Each 
nation's legacy is in the ball sack of the men. Point blank period. And what does that do? That puts the importance of the men, which this world ultimately, the, the, the men are attacked. And a lot of Israelites like to bring that vibration, which is a Western philosophy, into the, the, the scriptures. Okay? And again, this doesn't take away the power of the Israelite woman. Okay, again, we teach that the Israelite woman will be the top woman, all right, in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, no, no, no woman will even come close. Okay, what we're teaching is just nature. Okay, the seed of the man determines the nation of Israel, even if it's planted in what you call strange ground, what springs forth is still an Israelite. That's what we attacked first, but let's go into this new uh, part two. This is Deuteronomy 16 and 19. Because at this camp, Washington on the coast, um, me personally, we're not respecters of persons. Personally, I speak for myself. If you're teaching false doctrine and I know about it, I'm most likely going to address it. Say your camp name. Say what you're teaching. You know, as far as what topic you're teaching on and how it's false if you're an individual i'm going to call your your page name out if i know you you know know of you i'm going to call your name out i may put your face in the video because i'm not a respecter of persons you know if false doctrine is false doctrine we need to address it and that's contrary to the scriptures because you're adding and subtracting from the word and we know the penalty for that that's right. Now, let me get to the point where he plays this brother's video. All right, here we go. To the, let's let a little more play from this point. And then we'll go to the 21 to 25 minute mark. Uh, Genesis 3 and 15, it says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head. <clears throat> what that mean, bruise thy head? All right, cause us to go off. Go off. Wrong. Oh, off. From the Lord, and thou and thou shalt bruise his heel, which is correct. He's correct on. No, he's not correct, brother. Okay, that is wrong. Let's listen again. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head. <clears throat> what that mean, bruise thy head? All right, cause us to go off. Go off from the Lord, and thou and thou shalt bruise his heel. Which is correct. He's correct on that. No, he's not correct. Let's go to the book of Genesis, the uh, so lock here. Let's go to Genesis, the uh, third chapter. All right, in the fifteenth verse. Now we're going to start at fourteen. Okay. Now, mind you, this is the Lord speaking unto the serpent. Okay. So let's listen close. Genesis 3 and 14. All right. This is this is because of what the serpent did. Now, mind you, uh, the story of Adam and Eve is a literal story, but it goes into a history. All right. This is not something that just happened in one day. All right? The serpent comes. No, this is a, a history of what would happen with Adam. All right. When you read Genesis, uh, uh, the uh, sixth chapter, it gives you the generations. Or Genesis, the fifth chapter. Okay, as a matter of fact, when you get Genesis, the fifth chapter, it says, this is the book of the generations of Adam. All right. In that, in the day that God created man in his likeness, God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. Okay, so ultimately the sons of God, which would issue forth from Adam through Seth because Abel was slew. All right were to hold to the traditions of righteousness, okay? And when you read this lineage, each, each of these men, all right, Seth, okay, uh, Enos, all right, they all had sons and daughters, okay? So the sons and daughters of God, which is fulfilled in the Adamites or Adam, okay, went off into these other different philosophies, so Genesis, the third chapter, yeah, it's it's something that literally happened, all right, Eve, you know, 
which represents the church, went off. Okay. <laughs> they, they, they separated from the ways that were passed down to them from the Most High through Adam. Okay. But anyway, maybe I'll do another lesson on that. Let's deal with this in Genesis, the third chapter. All right, because first he addresses the woman. Okay. And she blamed the serpent. All right. Now, right here in Genesis 3 and 14, and the Lord said unto the serpent. So the Lord is speaking unto the serpent. All right. Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. Okay. And they are cursed. All right. They're the worst all right, nation, which that will be fulfilled ultimately in the Edomites. Okay. That's the seed of the serpent. Okay. Cain as well. It says, it says, because thou had this, this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shall thou go. All right. And being upon that belly means you're the lowest of the low. All right. You're looked down upon. Okay. It does, it's not an actual snake. Again, the word serpent, nahash, when you go to the root word, it means a diviner, a witch. So this was a man or a nation of people who came with an off philosophy that led the Israelites, the woman, to go off the chosen seed. Okay? It says, Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. All right? Meaning you will be the lowest of the low. All right? Now, check out verse 15. And I will put enmity, all right, between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Okay? And that will be played out through Jacob and Esau. Okay? And it shall bruise thy head. See, it, the woman, shall bruise thy head. So this is not talking about the serpent or Esau making us to go off. This is the future prophecy of what Yahawashah is going to do, all right, unto the heathen starting with these Edomites. And we'll get the precepts on that. Okay, it shall bruise thy head. We're going to crush the head of the serpent under Yahawashah. That's what that's talking about. See? It shall bruise thy head. So the Lord is telling the serpent, look, you're going to eventually be taken down. All right. And thou, okay, and you will bruise his heel. So the head being bruised is speaking of what's coming to the serpent. What the serpent did to us, okay, is bruised our heel. Now, anyone who knows about an Achilles tendon injury, you're down for a long time. Okay. You're injured. You're hurt. Most people don't come back from those injuries. All right. We were, we, you're not able to move forward. You can't run. Okay. You can't be prosperous. That's what happened to the nation of Israel through eventually the seed of the serpent, which is the biblical Edomites. They took us down. It was a falling away, but through the Holy spirit, we have been healed. We're being healed. The healing process starts with us receiving a word. Now dealing with the bruising of the head. Okay. Where it, the woman. Okay. The woman shall bruise thy head. All right. Now let's get precepts. I actually put the precepts all on this brother's video. All right. To let him know, you know, that that, that, that was, that wasn't the truth. Okay. Let me read what I put on this brother's video. All right. We got Genesis 3 and 15. I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head. The woman shall bruise your head and thou shall bruise his heel. So you're going to bruise the heel of the seed of the woman, which is the descendants, all right, that come out, what? Of the nation of Israel, okay? And ultimately, when Jacob and Esau were in the womb of Rebekah, that's how the seed of the woman through Jacob and the seed of the serpent through Esau would ultimately clash, Okay, and there's various history points where you can see that we had friction with these people. All right, and we'll show you a notable one in uh, Revelation, the 12th chapter. We've always had friction. All right, uh, Mordecai. All right, uh, 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 Samuel with uh, Saul with uh, uh, Agag. Okay, we've always been at all with these people, even unto this day. That's the, 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 our people questioning why there's so much hatred between us and the so-called white man. Well, it's in the scriptures. You just have to apply the Holy Spirit, man. 
to deal with you. The, the Holy Spirit has to be dealing with you to get it. But anyway, Yahweh is talking to the serpent here. If you start at verse 14, the woman's seed bruising the head is what will be done to the seed of the serpent under Yahweh Shai, not him making us go off. All right, so both of you, you he was wrong and, and you were wrong, brother, on that point. The serpent bruising our heel can go into them making us go off and not being able to move forward for a while. Lord willing, I'll do a lesson, and that's what this is. This is Romans 16 and 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. See, we're going to bruise Satan, all right? And when you get 2 Thessalonians, the 12th chapter, or 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, all right, around the 8th verse, it tells you that Esau, Edom, let's get it, okay? This is Esau, Edom, 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. And the eighth verse says, and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. All right. And that's the prophets and destroy with the brightness of his coming, the, the chariots, because the prophets are going to speak. All right. His end into existence, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. All right. Now, when you go also to the scriptures, okay. Esau, Edom, in Revelation 12, which is a very, very key chapter in understanding this, okay, it's called that old serpent, okay, the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, see, that old serpent, so the, the, the seed of the serpent, okay, would be fulfilled ultimately through Esau, Edom, okay, who ran the Roman Empire, who is that great red dragon? And we'll get to that in just a minute. But what did I put on this brother's comment board was the precept. Okay. Romans 16 and 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. See that? The grace of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach be with you. Okay. And that's what Yahweh Shai is coming to do. Okay. As a matter of fact, we'll just get it. Let's get Revelation, the 12th chapter. Which this kind of breaks down what, you know, the, the, the Genesis, the third chapter. This is Revelation, the 12th chapter and the first verse. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. OK, and that woman represents the 12 tribes of Yasha Allah. OK, the 12 tribes of Israel. All right. Uh, uh, Jeremiah six and two. I have likened the daughter of Zion unto a comely and delicate woman. Okay, and she had 12, uh, uh, a crown of 12 stars on her head, which is the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, the, the blessed people of the planet Earth, but we would have to undergo what? Hell, right? Because of a fall that goes all the way back to our forefather, Adam. Okay, it says, and she being with child cried, Travelling in birth and pain to be delivered. Now, at that time, okay, this 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 uh, woman, okay, is in captivity, all right, in the Roman Empire. And at that time, our people who read the scrolls, they were looking for a savior, okay. And she being with child, ultimately, because Yahweh Shai is going to eventually come, all right. Verse three, and there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Okay. And that great red dragon is ultimately the Roman Empire. Okay. Esau Edom is red. Okay. And at this time that this prophecy is speaking of the Israelites, Judea was a, a vassal or a province of the Roman Empire. Rome was ruling and we were cast down. Okay. It says, and his tail drew down the third part of the stars of heaven. His tail drew down the third part of the stars of heaven because you had Judah, Benjamin, and Levi primarily who were still in Jerusalem, in Judea. Okay? And we were ultimately in subject to the Roman authority. Okay? So we were cast down. We were not 
in our power, which is where a lot of Jake at that time had issues. They were like, we shouldn't be under the Romans. So they revolted. Okay. <laughs> but when Yahweh Shah came, they were like, look, ain't you fit to take these people down? Well, that wasn't his time to take them down. That's going to happen when he comes and I'm not going to meet you as a man. His purpose of being born was to be a sacrifice, which that blood would, it would seal the deal in bringing us back to the father. But prophecy still had to play out. So it says, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them down to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered. Our people were ready to be delivered. All right. Even at the time of Acts, before Yahweh Shah ascended back into the heavens, what did the disciples say? Are you going to now restore the, the, you know, the, the nation of Israel? All right. The kingdom. Like, what, what are you doing? You came. We followed you. Why are you going back up? <laughs> All right, because there was more prophecy that had to be fulfilled and he would be mediator and high priest in the heavens. OK, so the dragon, the Roman Empire, stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now, what history does this go to? OK, all you would have to do is just look up the precepts. All right, and it takes you to Herod. This is one Herod was trying to what destroy the seed which would come okay and that's Yahweh Shai so the red dragon represents the Roman Empire okay the woman represents the the the, the Israelites okay and that's the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman all right having a clash here where as Herod what did he do he he went and tried to have all of the male children slew because he wanted to cut off the seed of that would eventually be Yahweh Shai. All right. And you can read that history in Matthew, the second chapter. I'm not going to read it all. So when you go to Revelation 12 and she, the woman, okay, the Israelites, because it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. He's of the tribe of Judah which is of the woman, one of the three stars that were cast down at this time, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, the, the Lord would come out of Judah, right? So he's of that woman. She, okay, through a union between Joseph and Mary, which Joseph was, was, was what? Of the house and lineage of David. He lay with Mary and the Messiah came. She brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. And her child was caught up into... Uh, to God into his throne. Okay, so Herod was not successful in slaying the Messiah, but he did kill off a lot of Hebrew Israelite children. All right, because he did not want this child to grow up and eventually be a sacrifice, but he did. And after he was sacrificed, he eventually rose from the dead, broke bread with brothers and sisters for 40 days and 40 nights, and he went back unto the throne. He went back into the heavens, the right hand side, to be mediator and high priest. Okay. So right here, you see the narrative of the, the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman going at it. And it happened many times. OK, but what's going to happen eventually <laughs> is that the, the, the woman is going to crush the head of the serpent. And that's going to be done under Yahweh Shai. As you can see here, he's going to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And when he comes back, he's going to take down the power structure primarily of the Edomites. Okay, who is this that coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? Isaiah 63. Okay, so Romans 16 and 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach be with you. Amen. Okay, so Satan will be bruised under our feet. Okay, and our, our enemies will be our footstool under who? Okay, let's get it. Let's get uh, Psalms 110 verse 1 and 1. This is a Psalm of David. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand, all right, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Okay, they're going to be our footstool, our foot are going to be over them. 
as David said over uh, uh, Edom, will I cast out my shoe? Like they're going to be under us. Okay. So going back, I put another precept, Habakkuk 3 and 13. Okay. Now, when you get Habakkuk, the, uh, the third chapter. Okay. This is a vision of the deliverance of Yahweh Shai's anointed, the Lord Yahweh's anointed through Yahweh Shai. Okay, so let's read a bulk of this vision starting at verse 8. He's seeing destruction, chaos on the earth. Okay, was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Was thine anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the sea that thou didst ride upon thine horses and thy chariots of salvation? Okay, the chariots of salvation we know are the chariots. And Yahweh Shah is coming back. As he said, I'm not going to meet you as a man. He's coming back on a big, gigantic fathership. Okay, and though that's our salvation. Thy bow was made uh, quite naked according to the oath of the tribes. Because there was an oath made, okay, with Abraham. There was a promise, all right, that that seed will be restored to that land. Even thy word, Selah. Thou didst cleave to the earth with rivers, okay? The mountains saw thee and they trembled. The overflowing of the water passed by. The deep uttered his voice and lifted up his hands on high. So he's seeing just utter destruction and chaos on the earth, all right? The, the sun and the moon stood still in their habitation and the light of thine arrows went forth, all right? And the shining of thy glittering spear, okay? There's going to be fire, coming from the chair is going to be war on the earth okay it says thou didst march through the land in indignation thou didst thrust the heathen in anger all right verse 13 thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people even for the salvation of thine anointed thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundation unto the neck say la all right <laughs> so there you go thou woundest Okay, let's get this word woundest. Because when you crush the head of a serpent, that's how you kill it. You can cut off his tail, that it'll still be wiggling around. Okay? Thou woundest. Alright, ma machataza. Alright. To smite through, shatter, wound. Shattering, that's ultimately what we're going to do to these heathen, starting with you Edomites, to smash or violently plunge, to strike through, wound, okay, we're going to wound what? The head of the wicked, all right, that wound is the head, okay, the word head is Ra'ash, the top, summit, the upper part, the chief, all right, these Amalekites, all right, the, the, the rulers of Esau's <laughs> kingdom, they're going to be taken down. They're going to be crushed. Their rulership, okay, their choicest, all right, their beginning, their head, okay, the, 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 you know, the chief of the Edomites is going to be taken down, all right, and that's prophecy. Let's get Isaiah, the 24th chapter. So this goes into some heavy prophecy, okay? Well, hopefully you brothers see what that really means, all right? Because there's people on the comment board, all right, agreeing with you that he was right on that. So that got to be fixed too. Isaiah 24 and 20, the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage and the transgressions thereof shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again. <laughs> See, that's the hell that's coming to this earth through the return of Yahweh Shai. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the hosts of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners or gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days, they shall be visited. OK, so the high ones, the proud rulers, as you read here in the NLT. OK, which are the head of the wicked, they're going to be crushed. Okay, through what? Primarily captivity, and then eventually that seed line will be chased out of the planet Earth. Okay, so let's read this again. Habakkuk 3, 
Okay, and 13, thou winnest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for the salvation of thine anointed. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. All right, also Babylon is going to be destroyed. This is the power structure. This is the head of the power structure of the Edomites. Okay, it's going to be utterly burned to a crisp. Okay, so and then their elites are going to scurry into those bunkers and then we're going to come down and enslave them. Okay. That's how the head of the serpent will be crushed. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. That's how they will eventually be stopped. Because this old serpent has done a lot. Okay. And it's the seed of the serpent. Meaning their descendants. Okay. Okay. My bad. Yep, that old serpent who deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. I mean, he's going going back into his lowest state. And his angels were cast out with him. They're going to lose the war because they're going to be fighting against all right, uh, uh, Michael and the, 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 the return of Yahweh Shai. And they're going to lose. Okay? So that should give you understanding on that. Reading this again, Habakkuk 3 and 13. Thou winnest forth for the salvation of thy people, even the salvation of thine anointed. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. Okay? By discovering the foundation unto the neck, say la. Scriptures say uh, the Judah's hand is going to be in the neck of his enemies. <laughs> okay? It says, Thou didst strike through his staves the head of his villages, okay, which is Babylon. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was to devour the poor secretly, and they're going to lose. NLT, with his own weapons, you destroyed the chief house of those who rushed out like a whirlwind, thinking Israel would be an easy prey. So he's going to use the missiles and fire from the chariots to, the, to, to finish you devils off. But the point is, he's going to wound the head out of the house of the wicked, which we know the wicked are Israelites. Okay, so going back to this brother's video. Psalms 68 and 21, but God shall wound the head of his enemies and the hairy scalp of such as go on still in his trespasses. And we know that's speaking of Esau. We don't even got to go into that. The first was red all over like a hairy garment, which he doesn't have hair on him. Although he is a hairy man that was speaking of more the color of the dyed garments at that time. Okay, so God shall wound the head of his enemies, okay, and the and the hairy scalp of such as one that going on still in his trespasses, which is the Edomites, which are fugitives going throughout the four corners of the earth, lying, raping, robbing, murdering, deceiving, pillaging, stealing. Okay, and they're going to eventually be stopped. Okay, so this is what this is talking about. When you read Genesis 3 and 15, okay. Let's go back, Genesis 3 and 15. Remember, this is the Lord speaking to the serpent. So if he's speaking to the serpent, which I've heard, um, I had to correct. This was corrected before, all right, um, because it can get tricky. Okay, but you just have to read verse 14. He's speaking to the serpent. In verse 15, he says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, which that will be fulfilled through Jacob and Esau being born. Okay. As the Lord creates both the righteous and wicked for his purposes and between thy seed and her seed, the seed of the woman. All right. That that does not prove women have seed. That's speaking of the descendants, the offspring. Let's look at this word seed of the nation of Israel, which is likened unto a woman. OK, which even at the time of the sons of God, there was enmity between them and the family line of Cain. OK. Seed is Zerai. There you go. Offspring. Seed. Sowing. Semen viral. Descendants. Okay. Do you had a woman come onto the comment board saying the seed of the woman meant the women produce seed? No. Okay. The, the, the semen viral. Women don't have sperm, man. Stop. A lot of y'all Israelites are too far out, man. Listening to all of these other philosophies. 
So, and I will put in enmity, hostility between you and the woman and between her seed and thy seed. Let's read this in the NLT. And I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring, which will be fulfilled through Jacob and Esau. If you follow in the story. OK, that was the importance of Jacob and Esau being born so that prophecy can be fulfilled. He will strike your head. OK, the seed of the woman will strike your head. And you will strike his heel. Now, what's worse, a head injury? Or a heel injury, which would you rather have? Even the scriptures say, God, I'd rather take the plague, you know, give me anything but the plague of the mind. Okay? Would you rather have your, your, your foot messed up or would you rather have your head messed up? Okay, none of them really, but for prophecy, we had to be bruised. Okay, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Okay, let's look up this word bruise. Okay. Sha wap. All right. Sha wap. What is that? Shanap. Yeah, sha wap. It says to bruise, to crush, to gaze upon, to desire, to seize. That were did not Esau eventually <laughs> do this to us? Now we're gonna do that to them. Okay, he's gaping upon us. He wants us to be under his vibration. He desires us to be his possession. He he crushed us. He bruised us. He fell upon us. When you fall upon somebody, all right, when you fall upon another nation, that means you wage war against them. Okay? Yeah, Shawak. To overwhelm. And did not the Edomites do that to the, the, the Israelites? Okay, why? Because it was it was foretold in prophecy, which is likened unto them bruising our heel. When you have an Achilles tendon injury, you're down for a long time. That's what happened to the nation of Israel. We were down. Okay, let's get the uh, scripture. And it was through the Roman Empire that Yahweh Shai was bruised, although it was our people. Um, yep, this is the book of Jeremiah 30. And 11, for I am with thee, saith Yahweh, to save thee, though I will make a full end of the nations, whether I have scattered thee, their power is going to be taken out. Yet I will not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure. Okay, and we we were disciplined through these captivities. That's a part of our correction, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. For thus said the Lord, Thy bruise is incurable, and thy wound is grievous. Only Yahweh Shai can heal this wound. That's why the scriptures say he's gonna come with what? Healing in his wings. Okay, let's get that. Malachi 4 and 2, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings because we were bruised. Now we're able to move forward because the healing process starts with us receiving his word. Okay, and ye shall go up as cow forth and grow up as cows. Um, let's see here. That's, and basically, that's the lost sheep awakening. So our our bruise is incurable. But there is a cure through Yahweh Shai. It says, there is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be uh, bound up. Thou hallest, has no healing medicines. You're not going to march. Okay, you're not going to, you know, get a bank and cure yourself. You're not going to, you know, be black and beautiful or all of these various different things. No, that's not going to work. All right. And nobody is pleading our cause, but the elect being raised up, starting with the men of the Lord. OK, and that's through Yahweh, through Yahweh Shai, that we're able to have this spirit. There is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up. Thou have no healing medicines. All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not. All of the people in these different nations, Jake love. They're not helping Jake out. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy. Thou shall what? Bruise his heel. Okay? 
wound. Let's look up this word wound. So hopefully, you know, brothers get the understanding of that, you know. The wound is ma ka. Okay. Beating, scourging, wound, slaughter, defeat, plague. We Esau got us, man. Okay. And he was able to do that via his blessing. Okay. Which is the sword. <laughs> All right. And we've always had friction with this particular nation throughout the whole scriptures, man. So it says, <laughs> I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. And this whole chapter, when you look it up, is, is talking about our deliverance out of captivity. Who's the final captivity? What's the final wound? The final blow to our nation would be through the Edomites, the seed of the serpent. Lamentations 4 and 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. Okay, that's the descendants of Edom, the seed of the serpent that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup shall also pass through unto thee, and thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. Okay. Uz is symbolic of Babylon, all right? The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. O offspring of Edom, prepare slaughter for the, his children. For the iniquity of thy fathers, he will discover thy sins. Isaiah 14 and 21. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of thy father. Okay, that's how we are going to crush the head of the seed of the serpent through their descendants. They bruised our heel through the descendants of Israel, which our forefathers and even us are a part of that. We're just a part of the healing process. So he wounded us with the wound of an enemy, which is the Edomites. That's the final captivity. Okay. And we and nothing would be able to save us but Yahweh Shai. Okay. <laughs> All right. So he goes into, you know, why are you crying for your affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable, the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. All right. But through an obedience in the latter days, that, that would start a healing process. Okay. So right here. Start at 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thy adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. And they shall they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all they that prey upon thee shall I give for a prey. For I will restore health unto thee, and will heal thee of thy wounds. Okay. Saith the Lord. Because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is hot Zion whom no man seeketh after. So there you go. So they bruised our heel. Let's look up the word heel. Because that's pretty much your support, how you're able to move forward. It's off of your feet. Okay? Very important. Icob. Heel, rear, footprint, hinder part, footstep, mark of a heel, footprint, hinder part. To supplant, to circumvent, to take by the heel. To follow at the heel, all right, to assail, to overreach, to supplant, okay? And that was a spirit that was put on Jacob. And it said, what? We're going to grab, you know, Jacob grabbing these heathen by their heel represented what? All right, uh, uh, Esau by his heel represented what? Well, let's get that. And we'll end it off. Second Edra 6. Spirit just told me to jump on this, you know, second edge of six and seven. Then answered I and said, what shall be the parting asunder of the times and when shall be the end of the first? As the scriptures say, Amalek would be the first of the nations. Esau would have his blessing of world domination first and the beginning of it that followeth, which is the blessing of the righteous the tabernacle of David being set up under Yahweh Shai. And he said unto me. 
from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. All right. So once our our heel is you know our our heel is uh, healed, okay. Eventually you're going to be taken down. All right, by the tabernacle of Jacob, the tabernacle of David, which is going to be established by Yahweh Shai. Okay. The hand of man is betwixt the heel and the hand. Other questions, Ezra's asked thou not. So hopefully, now that that was uh, broken down, you brothers and you sisters have a better understanding of Genesis all right, uh, 3, 14, and 15. All right, because it goes in and out of prophecy. The punishment that came into the serpent and the woman goes into some serious prophecy, but then it went, you know, onto what actually happened in history between uh, Eve and so forth. All right, and we have various breakdowns on that. So hopefully y'all are edified. On to the next. Shalom.